in Creo Direct, you can create new assemblies and the process is different than what you're used to for standard parametric modeling. Let's take a look at how to do that. Here I am in Creo Direct. I am going to click on the new icon and you'll notice in Creo Direct, you can only create two different kinds of entities, parts or assemblies. Let's choose the assembly button. And also you'll notice that there are no subtypes like you have in Creo Parametric. And so let me call this my engine direct to indicate that I'm creating it using direct modeling. And I'm gonna uncheck use default template just to choose the template that I want. And then I will click the OK button. And so now here I am in assembly mode and you'll notice that it looks a lot different than assembly mode in Creo Parametric. For example, if you take a look at the ribbon, there are only three tabs, Home, View, and Tools. And on the Home tab, the only real commands that you have are to insert components, position components, and then move and rotate them. Yes, you have other commands like mirror component and Boolean operations. Also, you can create different datum features, but it's very limited what you can do here because it is intended as a rapid concepting environment. If we take a look at the view tab, oh well, yeah, there are just a few basic commands related to viewing different things, including creating cross sections. And then the tools tab really has nothing on it. Let's go back to the home tab. Now we're gonna start putting our components into the assembly. To do that, I will use the insert command and then I'm gonna grab a part from my working directory. And by default, it's automatically attached to the end of your mouse. In standard mode, that's the result of setting the config.pro option comp assemble start to move then place, which is the default in Creo Direct. And you'll just click on the left mouse button to place it somewhere just to drop it on the computer screen and as opposed to regular Creo Parametric, it kind of doesn't matter where you're going to drop the first component. In Creo Parametric, 99% of the time you're probably going to use the default constraint. Eh, here you're just going to locate it. And to do that, you can click the middle mouse button and that puts the component in the assembly. You'll notice that is not aligned with my default datum planes. It's just located in there. Let me turn off the display of my datum planes and coordinate system and axes since I no longer need them. I also don't need the spin center. So there's the first component in the model. If you take a look at the model tree, you'll notice that we have planes, coordinate systems, and then here's the first component. When I expand engine block rear, all that you see are the bodies that are associated with this component because when you're using direct modeling, you're not working with features, you're working with geometry. And in assembly mode, we're just locating components in here. Let's place a second component. I will use the insert command once again. Let's grab another component and then just drop it on the screen. You've got a 3D dragger if you want to position it roughly before locating it. And in this particular situation, in order to locate it, in different places you can use essentially what are constraints but they're not going to be stored as constraints in this floating toolbar you can see that I have the standard constraints like coincident and distant and parallel normal so forth and so on and you can activate the different collectors for the references that you want to pick but let me zoom in here and then grab this cylindrical surface and then this cylindrical surface and then it adjusts them to be coincident to one another. Let me select a, another hole and the tab that goes along with it and it adjusts those. And finally, let's select this surface and this surface and then, then it makes them coincident. And so now that I've got the component located, I can use the middle mouse button now it appears in the model tree. Once again, all I have are bodies underneath here. Be aware that if you then later on open up this assembly in Creo Parametric, these components are going to be located with fixed constraints 
And the constraint that I essentially just used with coincident four different surfaces, those will actually be in the assembly, but those constraints will not be activated. They're just located with that fixed constraint. And let's place one more component in here just to show you something a little different. I'm going to insert a component. Let me grab this one. And again, I'll just drag it and locate it approximately where I want it to be. And now I'm going to hit the middle mouse button without creating any different kinds of constraints located in the model. It is in the wrong place. So here we've got the cylinder part, which we can click on. And then you could do things like move and rotate if you wanted to. And here we have the move rotate dialog box and you can grab on the different handles and try to relocate it and you can see the dimensions that are in there. I'm just going to hit the middle mouse button to get out of that. But now if I want to start adding constraints after the fact in order to place this where I want it to be, we'll use the position command and then it's prompting me to select the component that I want to position. I will click on the cylinder component and this is a little tricky. The next thing that you have to do is activate one of your two collectors and one of the collectors says choose a reference for placing the component in the assembly and the other one says choose a reference for placing the component in the assembly. So one of these are for selecting a reference from the component, one is for the assembly. Hey, which is which? Good question. And so I will activate one of the collectors and then pick this hole and then this hole and it adjusts it. And now let me pick say this hole and pardon me while I adjust the model and that one over there. And it gives us a second constraint. And then for the last positioning reference, I can pick this flat surface and this flat surface and now it gives me a coincident constraint. Again, you've got a drop down list if you wanted to change something to maybe distance or oriented. Is oriented in there? But you have your different constraints that are located in here that you can use. And when I'm done positioning it, I will hit the middle mouse button. So in that way, I've got my components located here in this assembly and Again, you do not have constraints when you are working in Creo Direct, but when you have the assembly opened in Creo Parametric, you're capable of getting to those constraints and making them active so that your assembly will behave parametrically. Since these are just located essentially with fixed constraints, they're not going to move parametrically. If I was to move one of these components, the other components would not move along with it because, again, that's the idea behind Creo Direct. We're just getting stuff in here in order to develop our concept rapidly. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.